Brother Jean's topic this morning is the judgment, and um, so I want to talk a little bit about that. Believers are not going to be afraid at the time of the judgment, but unbelievers, it's going to be a different story for them. They're going to want to, the rocks to fall on them, it says, to hide them from God because they know what's coming. Now, we know that the judgment is coming because God has told us in his word, and we believe his word by faith. But it's not as though we've never heard of any other judgments of God in the past, which I'm going to recount for you here in just a few minutes, some examples. Because of the record, we can reason that what God tells us is going to happen on the day of judgment will come to pass because we have these examples for us. God uh, is faithful in keeping his promises, and we can see this in his word so that we know then to look forward to that when it's going to come. So I'm just going to recount these very familiar passages to you. One is about the flood, of course, from Genesis 6. Here, uh, we're going to read just a little short passage that tells, he's telling what he's going to do, first of all. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and was grieved in his heart. And he said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, from man to animals, to creeping things and to birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. So we know by that what he said he was going to do, and then over in just the next chapter, how he carried that out was by a flood. So in chapter 7 it says, Then the flood came upon the earth for forty days, and the water increased and lifted up the ark so that it rose above the earth. The water prevailed more and more upon the earth so that all the high mountains everywhere under the heavens were covered. And all flesh that moved on the earth perished, birds and cattle and beasts and every swarming thing that swarms upon the earth and all mankind. So there exactly what he said he would do, he did. So another example then is the, uh, the people of Israel, all the warnings that God gave them about their sinful, wicked lives, and they didn't listen. Isaiah was one of them that warned them, that God used. In Isaiah, uh, the third chapter, he says, For behold, the Lord God of hosts is going to remove from Jerusalem and Judah both supply and support, the whole supply of bread and the whole supply of water. For Jerusalem has stumbled and Judah has fallen because their speech and their actions are against the Lord to rebel against his glorious presence. So Isaiah gave much warning and so did Jeremiah, among others. And say, hear the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Behold, I am about to bring a calamity upon this place at which the ears of everyone that hears it will tingle. Because they have forsaken me, and have made this an alien place, and have burned sacrifices in it to other gods, that neither they nor their forefathers nor the kings of Judah had ever known, and because they have filled this place with the blood of the innocent. Over in uh, the next chapter, he also goes on to say, Behold, I am going to make you a terror to yourself and to all your friends, and while your eyes look on them, they will fall by the sword of their enemies. So I will give over all Judah to the hand of the king of Babylon, and he will carry them away as exiles to Babylon and will slay them with the sword. So there he's, he's telling again, of course, the people did not listen. Uh, as we know, Babylon did come, over, did come in and, and take over Jerusalem, just as God had said. And even though warning after warning after warning God sent his prophets, they did not listen. And so this is the uh, result here. This is exa exactly as he said it would happen. In 2 Chronicles, the 36th chapter, I was going to read a portion of it. The Lord, the God of their fathers, sent word to them again and again by his messengers, because, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they continually mocked the messengers of God, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets, until the wrath of the Lord rose against his people until there was no remedy. Therefore he brought up against them the king of the Chaldeans, who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion on young man or virgin or man or infirm. He gave them all into his hand. All the articles of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king and of his officers, he brought them all to Babylon. Then they burned the house of God and broke down the walls of Jerusalem and burned all its fortified buildings with fire and destroyed all its valuable articles. So it happened just as God said. He did exactly what he said he would do. So just as these and many other judgments that we could talk about this morning were carried out by God, he, he clearly tells us there's one more judgment to come yes, in his word. He doesn't hide it. He reveals it to us. 
And that day of judgment is coming. That great and terrible day of the Lord will come. And I want to close with uh, Brother Gene's text for his uh, sermon this morning from 2 Corinthians 5.10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad.